Our 2020 and 2021 years, La Nina years. What is La Nina and El Nino? Southern Oscillation. Let's talk about Pacific climate and its effect on the global climate on our planet and what does it mean for us. Climate variability from year to year is different. For example, if you live in New Zealand, this spring was particularly different for you. In some areas you have a lot of rainfall, heavy storms, strong winds, in other areas you experienced droughts. This summer is known to be quite hot than last previous summers. Scientists in New Zealand reported La Nina prevailing right now in the South Pacific. But how often this climate is changing? How frequent it is? How can we predict it? Let's talk about that. Climate variability from year to year in the global scale, controlled by global ocean and atmospheric interactions. It's one of the most fast and rapid changes in ocean atmospheric circulation affecting our from year to year climate. El Nino and La Nino Southern Oscillation, or called ENSO, are the most important and have effect on many regions of our planet, which have its birthplace in the tropical Pacific. Tropical Pacific is one of the vastest areas of open waters on our planet, and one of the warmest areas, with the sea surface temperature around the equator warms up and by the trending winds move towards the west. We call it in the Pacific warm pool, and it's carrying a layer of shallow surface water and a temperature just above 28 degrees. At the same time, in contrast, along the western margins of the Pacific, cold upwelling waters against the coast of tropical South America, under normal condition, there is a strong temperature and sea level pressure gradient across the equatorial Pacific from east to west. And with the Indo Pacific warm pool, as it is known, carrying a layer of shallow surface water at or just above 28 degrees. By contrast, cold upwelling waters against the coast of tropical South America are often as cold as 23 degrees. The strong convection over that area form part of circulation system, which we call walker circulation. It's very strong and it's like pumping heart muscle, circulating air, surface water and moisture. When this pattern occur, we have heavy precipitation over that affected area and stabilize the shallow surface layer of warm water. In contrast, dry conditions are experienced along the coast of South America. And we know that area with the high productivity of the ocean affected by the cold upwelling waters. We talked about that in the previous video about ocean currents. However, periodically we experience more stronger or kind of marginal aspects of this circulation. And we call it by the Spanish term El Niño, meaning little boy, or kind of mostly opposite effect, La Niño, little girl. We'll have the videos in more detail talking about each of these extreme conditions and global impact on the climate. However, briefly, we can say in El Niño conditions, the westward flow of the air over the sea surface weakens and the center of convention linked to the warm pool shift eastward into the central Pacific. The eastward displacement of the warm pool is linked to changes in ocean stratification, thermohaline shallowing to the west and deepening to the east. And therefore, the cold upwelling water along the coast of Ecuador and Peru is replaced by warmer waters. We can expect that from that the zonal surface temperature gradient become very weak and weakens the westward surface airflow. At that time, we experience huge decline of marine production all along the coast of America because due to the weakened upwelling. At the same time, South America experiences more rainfalls, which you might consider it as a positive effect. In the areas of Western Pacific, where usually we have strong cyclones and rainfall, we experience more drier conditions. Such areas like Australia dramatically impact by that and we experience a lot of droughts and even bushfires. And if we go to other direction from the normal condition, we experience La Nina. And that's exactly what we experience right now. Southern spring 2020 and summer 2021. This condition is supposed to last up to 6-12 months 
and they're controlled by westward shift of the circulation. The cold water spreads as tank from the eastern edge of the Pacific westward, and the walker circulation becomes strong. This reinforced cold upwelling on the coast of Ecuador and Peru, and the droughts tend to be very strong. At the same time, there is a strong increase in precipitation all along western part of that affected area, including New Zealand, northern East Australia and Asia. So how this affected us, people who live on different continents, Australia, Asia, North and South America or even Europe? Scientists now concluded that these oscillations in the Pacific affecting whole climate of the planet. And in different places there will be different effects depends on the regional conditions. Sometimes El Nino and La Nino are stronger, or sometimes weaker, and they have different effect on the global climate and conditions. For example, in 1997-1998 years, we have very strong effect on the global climate, and the whole planet was affected. Climatologists and scientists study these effects, and they're also looking into the past, last five, six, or even 10,000 years ago by looking in the data recorded by the corals and other proxies in affected areas. Even scientists study the snow in the mountain caps in Himalaya and shows good record for last several centuries of La Nino and El Nino. These variabilities in Pacific have a widespread on climate and environment processes well outside the tropical Pacific. We know their effect on the extent of the Antarctic sea ice Atlantic Ocean circulation, and even on the variations in carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. But let's look on a closer how La Nino, which we experience right now, especially those who live in, in Pacific or Oceania regions, and how it will affect our climate. We experience more contrast conditions, such as more intense storms in one areas and droughts in others. Scientists observing the impact of La Nino since 1950s and in the last 70 years, we notice, depends on the season, it has different impact on particular areas. For example, Asia. Formation of tropical cyclones shifted westward during the La Nina to the Western Pacific. And it's affecting all the Asia, in particular, for example, in China, who have more precipitation, heavy storms. And scientists recorded more landslides, landfalls due to that. At the same time, the drop in the sea surface temperature around southern East Asia, about a couple degrees, caused heavy rainfall over areas like Malaysia, Philippines and Indonesia. Australia is affected by La Nino and Nino directly. In La Nina, we have increased rainfall and cloud cover, especially in the north and eastern areas. We even have more snow cover, which is not so typical for Australia. Also, the rivers in Australia, which not even exist during the El Nino or other years in normal conditions, uh, become flooded, full, and they bring material down to the ocean. New Zealand, like Oceania, directly affected by El Nino or El Nino. And for example, in this year, we experienced a lot of very heavy storms, strong winds, change of the pressure in the North and South Island, which varies. Scientists recorded that northeasterly winds are more characteristical and they bring more moisture and rainy conditions to the northeast of the North Island. At the same time, we experience reduced rainfall south and southwest of South Island. Some areas will experience droughts in the central and south South Island. At the same time, we have warmer summer of the North Island and winter and wetter condition in some areas. You'd be surprised, but Africa is affected as well by these oscillations. In La Nina result in wetter than normal condition in Southern Africa from the Southern Hemisphere summer period, December to February. And people experience droughts and dry conditions over equatorial East Africa over the same period. For example, from 50 to 100,000 people died during the 2011 East Africa drought affected by La Nina. Of course, South America experience directly La Nina. We have a lot of droughts during the La Nina in the coastal regions of Peru and Chile in the southern summer. However, Brazil observed to be wetter than normal. La Nina causes higher than normal rainfall in the central Andes and the catastrophic floods 
in some parts of South America. As we mentioned before, the productivity of the ocean drops dramatically, which will affect the human activity and fishing in that area. We know that the ocean life is well affected by these oscillations. In extremes, we have the flash of the productivity in the ocean, fishes, uh, seals, birds, the all flushing and the love upwelling seasons. Or when we have more lesser gradient, it's affecting directly many, many, many animals. Some of them even die. We know that La Nino and Nino affected North America as well. Depends on the regions, varies from western to eastern part of the America. One part's getting more wetter, one more drier. And also it might affect the oscillations, ocean and atmosphere circulation in the Atlantic have an effect on the Europe climate. If you're stuck in a quarantine this year in Europe, you would experience some colder periods, which we didn't experience several last years ago. Therefore now, I hope you have understanding that the climate is not typical from year to year. It's varies, and one of the biggest drivers we have on this planet is the huge circulation of the Pacific Ocean. In next video, we talk about patterns, what scientists think causing those oscillation, and more detailed look on the regional effect of La Nino, El Nino in the neutral conditions.